trip is almost done and we're in Mons. Now, I've been relating some of the letters my great great uncle Harry wrote home during World War I. It's an interesting feeling personalizing the war by following the footsteps of one of my ancestors. It definitely brings home the realities of the conflict more than any cold history text could ever do. There are many more letters from many more soldiers that are available online and I encourage you to seek them out and you can find them through the Canadian Letters and Images project online. Now it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster of emotions for, for both Katie and I, I think. I mean, some of it through sheer mental and physical exhaustion, frankly. Uh, and I'm sure it's changed us in many subtle ways that, that may only show up in, in years to come. Now to end off my time here and with Harry, uh, I'm going to quote uh, from a couple of his letters that he wrote towards the end of the war and sent home. Now Harry was always trying to be positive. In one of his letters he writes, In reading Aunt Anne's letter, I was struck by the continual worry for us in the army. If you could only realize we are safe nine-tenths of the time, even in the worst places, things are not as bad as you might imagine. After all, to be killed in action is not the worst thing that can happen to a man. In November of 1917, Harry got wounded. He writes, I managed to connect with the shell the other day and am now recovering in hospital. I got hit on the leg with a large piece of shrapnel which did not penetrate. I was not going out with it, but half an hour later, got a bullet through the left arm and had to come out. I didn't know I was hit. I was dressing another fellow when I felt the blood running down my arm. Harry recovered from those wounds and was sent back to the front. And in April of 1918, he got married while on a short leave to a girl he met in England named Gertie Crick. Which is an awesome name. Then in late September of 1918, Harry wrote home again. Now it's just a month since I was hit again and the wound is all but healed. At present, my hand is completely useless and devoid of feeling except for a dull pain that set in the minute I was hit has never abated. I hardly dare hope that it will mean Canada, but one never knows. At any rate, I will hardly see France again until next spring, and by that time, the war will be over. Harry had signed up in 1914. He went in as a bugler and eventually was discharged as a major in February of 1919. His right hand never regained complete usefulness, and he learned to write with his left hand. Following the war, he had a, a long and successful life, uh, married to Gertie, and lived in Western Canada. So thank you for following along with uh, Katie and I on our journey. It's been an incredible experience for sure.